Welcome back to the final video in our four part mini series all about email marketing for photographers. Quick little recap. In part one, we talked about the importance of marketing with an email list. In part two, you learn the snag, serve and sell process. In part three, I provide a basic framework for what to include in each and every one of your automated emails. Now, if you missed any one of those, be sure to click the links that you see around this video to watch. Now, in our last video of this series, I'm going to head inside of ConvertKit, my email software system, and show you how to build out your email funnel from start to finish. Hey, hey friends, Heather Chesky here, the creator of The Booked Photographer. After being unexpectedly laid off from my steady day job well over a decade ago, I built a multiple six-figure photography business while simultaneously raising my babies and homeschooling. And I did this with zero formal business training and in the middle of a saturated area. Now, in the beginning, nobody, and I mean nobody, thought it was possible to make a consistent living as a photographer but they were wrong. It's absolutely possible to make a great living as a photographer and I can show you how. Every week we put out new videos to help portrait and wedding photographers attract their ideal clients and fill their calendar so they can consistently contribute to their family finances. But here's the catch. We are not about grinding it out or neglecting your marriage or your children or your sleep. After all, what's the point of building a business if you lose or miss out on life's most important relationships? So here we put God first, family second, and only pursue the most impactful things in marketing and business, not the things that waste your valuable time and won't make a bit of difference at the end of the day. If that resonates with you, stick around, subscribe, and enjoy. All right, so here we are at convertkit.com. If you don't already have an account with ConvertKit, uh, there is a link beneath this video. It is my unique link to join ConvertKit. The cool thing about ConvertKit is that you actually have a free 14-day trial to get started to see if you like it or not, to get a better feel of this email platform. They're not going to ask you a credit card at all to get started, so it's purely a 100% free trial. So when you're ready to do that, all you'll want to do is click on the green green sign up button. Now I've already done this with a test account that I'm going to be using for the purposes of sharing how to use ConvertKit. But once you go ahead and put in your name and email that you want to use, ConvertKit is going to have you answer a series of questions. They're super simple. It's all about, you know, your audience size, more information about your business or about you and your specific goals with using ConvertKit. So all you have to do is go through those questions, just type in your answers or click the appropriate response and then just click continue. Now, once you're done with that onboarding process, ConvertKit will then take you to this, this page right here. This is considered the convert kit dashboard. Now there's a lot to go over here. And to be perfectly honest, I am not going to go over everything in this video. We are purely going to focus in on how to create your automated email sequences and how to automatically send that out to your new subscribers. So that's the point of this video right here. And because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and direct you to those specific things that you need. So you'll see up here on the header bar, you have a few tabs. You have the grow tab, send, automate, earn, and learn tab. What you'll want to go to first is the send tab. When you click on that, it'll have a drop down, and what you'll want to click on is the sequences. Now, the sequences is the a series of multiple email series, and if you've watched all of our video trainings on email marketing, you know that this is a series of about seven emails that are automated to send out within the first week to two that somebody uh, that where somebody joins your email list. So what we're going to do is go ahead and craft those emails. We're going to get them all in ConvertKit. And hopefully by now, if you've been following along, you already have a good idea or a, a draft version of the emails that you want to send. So once you click on that sequences, again, it's the send tab and then click on sequence. 
What you'll want to do is go ahead and click this button that says new sequence. Um, so go ahead and click on that. And then you can have an option to choose a template. Honestly, I don't really care about this part. Um, you could choose any template you want. It, it doesn't really matter at all. You can make your emails look fancy a little bit later. So once you choose a, a template, uh, I, there's a few things I want to direct you to right up here on the top left. It says sequence. Yours will probably say, you know, just say sequence. Mine says uh, parentheses two, just because this was a second sequence that I was creating. I encourage you to go ahead and click this little uh, pencil here. And when you click on that, you can actually edit the name of the sequence. So you can say, hey, freebie or uh, freebie or, you know, opt in or, you know, what, and then you have the name of whatever you were providing to encourage somebody to put in their name and email. So whatever the name of that freebie is, uh, name of freebie. So that's how I like to name them. At this point in time in my business, I actually have quite a few sequences and quite a few different opt-ins. So this just helps keep things organized on the back end of the business or on back end of, you know, ConvertKit. So once we have the name of the entire sequence written, we're going to focus in on writing that very first email. So first up, you see subject line. That's very straightforward. That is the subject line in the email. So when you send this email, this is what appears in somebody's inbox. Now, what I like to do is name it with like whatever that freebie name is. You can name it whatever you uh, want to, um, but I like to make sure it's named with the, like the name of the freebie that I gave. So whether it was like that month by month wedding planning checklist that I referred to in an earlier video, or maybe it's like, hey, the top 10 things to have in your newborn nursery, go ahead and name that or use the subject line as an area to put in the name of your freebie. So when it arrives in somebody's inbox, they know, oh yeah, I signed up for this. All right. So once you have a name, what you'll want to do is come to, we're going to wait on the publish right here. Once the email is ready, you'll we'll want to click this over, but we don't want to do it yet because the email is not quite ready. But then the next section is send this email. Now this email, this initial email, we want to send immediately. So where it says send email and it should say one right now, you want to have zero or zero hours. So basically it's going to switch up here to say immediately. So as soon as somebody gets on your list, they are going to be automatically sent this message right here. And that's what we want. Um, and then this area right here is the, and then so here is the body of the email. Now, the point of the body is basically to give them what you said you would give your new email subscriber. So here we're going to introduce that name, the freebie. We're going to say maybe a few benefits and then also include the link to where they can actually download that freebie. So that's the whole point of the very first email. The other thing that I want to show you here is that you can actually personalize it. So maybe if you're saying, hey, and then if you come over to this at symbol on the far right, click on that, you can actually Add personalization. And what I like to you do is use the subscriber's first name. And that just, you know, you know, doesn't mean like it, it just feels more personal to that client. So it's, hey, um, you know, first name or, or prospect, you know, obviously it's going to fill in with Jane or Joe or, you know, Sammy. Um, you could say something so glad you signed up, signed up to get XYZ. You'll learn XYZ. Um, and obviously your email is going to be a lot more thorough. And again, if you need to reference uh, what to put in each and every email, video number three went in detail about what kind of content to have in each of your seven different emails. Um, and then basically you could say, uh, view your checklist or guide, whatever it was, checklist guide. Um, you could say by clicking right here. And then what you can do is I like to go ahead and highlight it and you can add a hyperlink. So you highlight whatever part you want to hyperlink and click this link right up here. And then basically you'll go ahead and paste that link to where they can go view or download your that that freebie. I don't have a link ready to go right now, but you know that's just something for, for you to do right there. Um, and then one of the things that I like to do is I like to let my subscribers know that they are going to be receiving more information from me. So I'll say something along the lines of be sure to check your inbox tomorrow 
to get X, Y, Z, or, you know, maybe another benefit or, you know, another value thing that you want to have um, and talk later. And then you're saying, oops, later. And then, you know, your name. So that's basically what it is. Um, basically the gist of that first email. Now, once you have that written out and, oh, you know what? Let me show you a few more things that you can do. Um, you can also, when you see this, you can um, see this little addition symbol right here. If you click on that, you can also make the emails look a little bit more, you know, fancy if you want to. You can add a button. You can, you know, uh, we already talked about a link. You can change out the layup. You can add a, a divider, which is, you know, just basically a, a straight line like that. You can add a bulleted list or icons or, you know, even images, or, or you can even also just upload a file if you want to as well. So you can really add a lot to the emails. And just by clicking that little addition sign, you'll be able to see all the different options that are available to you. But again, for the purpose of this training, I'm going to keep things super, super basic. Um, oh, and then actually just one more thing. Let's just say you wanted to bold or highlight, italicize some of the, the words in your email. All you have to do is highlight it and then click on the B and it will be bolded the I to italicize it, or you can underline it or strike through. So you can do a lot of variety. You can also change the size of the text as well, just by, you know, hitting the little T's. Um, you can also change the color of the text. So I also like to incorporate my branding colors in these emails. So I definitely use the, the color code and I'll change some of the words in my email, some of the sentences in my email to reflect my brand colors. So those are just a few things that you can do to make your email look a little bit more unique and um, custom to you and your business. Now, once you're done drafting that email, you can definitely click up here on the top right where if you want to um, see a preview of it, I actually highly recommend that. Reread your emails. Sometimes there might be typos or, you know, a random symbol or, you know, punctuation that wasn't supposed to be there. So you can preview it in a browser or you can have it send you an email uh, as well, a sample email as well. So I encourage you to do that before this actually goes live. But once it looks good, all you have to do is come back here to the publish uh, icon here and just click this ticker to the uh, to the right. Now, I will also caution this. You'll see here um, at the bottom, the account is not allowed to send emails. Now, I will say that that is because sending automated emails is not a free feature in ConvertKit. So you actually have to have a be a paying member of ConvertKit. And honestly, the prices aren't bad. They With ConvertKit, they price you on how many subscribers you have. So if you don't have a whole lot of subscribers, subscribers at the moment, it's not going to cost you a whole lot at the moment. So I would just say, if you're really serious about this process, just go ahead and jump on into a paid membership or a, be a paying for ConvertKit so that you can get the added benefit of doing the automation and you won't have to manually send these out, which is a, a just a drain on your time and your energy. But that's why, you know, this is not letting me click on right now is because technically this is my sample account and I don't, I'm not paying for a sample account. It's purely for teaching reasons only, but this uh, circle would go to the right. And then the button over here will say that it's ready to go. It will no longer say draft. And that way, you know, you're, you're all set to go. And as soon as somebody joins, joins your email list, they're going to automatically be sent this email. Now, if you remember from our previous um, videos about email marketing, you know that we like to send a series of about seven emails that again are all automated. So how do we add on those additional emails? Well, all you have to do right here is click on the add email button, and then it's going to pull up another email. So you see email number one right here and email number two. And then again, you make your adjustments. So obviously you want to change the subject line um, to, you know, new. Um, I mean, you could have it say anything you want to nice to meet you in my second email. I like to give a little bit more of an introduction to myself and what they can expect from me. So that might be a good subject line to include. And then obviously down here in the body of the email, you change this around to, you know, email number two um, and what you put in there. Again, if you're not sure what to put in email number two, 
refer back to video number three of this series. Again, I'll link it beneath this, beneath this video so you'll have a good overview of what to include in each and every email. Again, once that is done, you'll want to have this email. You can change around to say send one day after the first email. If you wanted to send it two days after, then you just hit the arrow icon and you can you know, obviously change this up to be however frequent you want to or not. For me, my, in my business, and personally, I like to have the emails go out every one to two days, even on a Saturday and Sunday, so I don't stop emails on the weekends. I like to have it go out every one to two days to really maximize the, the first week that somebody is on my list. So once you have email number two written, again, you'll just go ahead and toggle that publish button over. And then again, uh, it won't do it here in my free account, my free test account. But once you do that, this will turn blue and it will say that this one is ready. The draft um, symbol right here will disappear. And then what now? We do the same process for email number three. So you click on the add email, and now this is going to be email number three. And you know, this one is more value. So again, with this in the whole email series, we want to make sure that we are adding value to our clients, value to our potential clients, answering the questions they have, making sure that they have what they need to know in order to take the next step with us and book us for their wedding or a portrait session. So in email number three, you're going to follow the, the templates or the framework that I've already provided. So you're going to, you know, type your uh, type more value, or, you know, you can link it to a blog post or a Facebook live. Um, again, you have call to action, various call to actions throughout this uh, whole process as well. Um, and then also for the call to actions, you'll want to use the link symbol. So again, say, if you want to say, Hey, follow me on Instagram. Um, so say Instagram, or we'll say, follow me. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram or it could be to join your Facebook group. Again, you'll just want to highlight that and then include the link to your Instagram or your Facebook or your blog post or whatever video you recently did that you want to share. So basically emails number three, four, five, three, four, and five, they're still adding value. They have soft call to action. And then also within those emails and definitely within emails six, five, six, and seven, you'll want to have um, a link or a way for them to connect with you about booking a session. So let's just go ahead and say this email is done. So we're going to say, have it sent one day after, pretend you went ahead and clicked publish. We're going to have email number four or five. Well, for, for the purpose of this, we're just going to say, hey, email, email, let's just say four uh, and five. But you know, this is uh, basically, you're going to have, well, you know, let me do it this way. So it's not as confusing. So you have email number four, and then we'll do another one. We'll have email number five. And then this is where you're going to start saying like, hey, here's how we can work together. Or here's the next step in the process. For me personally, I like to speak with my prospects on the phone before I require them to put any money down. That's the process that I really like. So again, in these emails, we want to add value. Remember, you're adding testimonials. Maybe you're including... I have to spell testimonials right. Maybe you're including some sample images that you do, sample images or a case. You could do a case study about a, a client who had a really great experience with you. And then you could say, are you curious to learn more about? And then insert the kind of photography you do, newborn photography um, or or let's see, family portraits, or what, whatever it is. You just want to go ahead and insert that here. Then you could say, Click here and let's chat. And then for me, in my case, this link would be linking them to my, my online calendar. I personally use Calendly. Again, I can link that below beneath this video. Um, and that's basically where somebody can call or basically sets up a time to speak with me on the phone and I learn more about, you know, their high school senior or their wedding day or their branding session or whatever it is that I'm photographing. And then I can actually share with them how, what it would look like to work with me. So obviously I have these call to actions in the last couple of emails um, to really encourage these people to reach out and take the next step. So again, you're going to go ahead and do this for email number, email number six. 
And then finally, email number seven. The other thing that you can consider, this is a bit more advanced, but you can also consider doing like a special deal. So basically, hey, if you book your session within the next 48 hours or within the next, you know, 24 hours. So basically each email, it's like, hey, you only have, you know, 48 hours left on this deal or you only have 24 hours left on this deal. That is another way to incentivize somebody to move forward faster. So that is kind of like a brief look at how to create the automated sequence within a uh, convert kit. Again, I know I'm not going into too much detail about what's in these emails. I already talked about that in video number three of this series. So definitely check out the link below this video. If that's something that you need more information on, and of course that video goes into a greater detail about that. The other thing to just keep in mind too is that you know you want to have the paid version of Convert Kit. Um, you know you can you know fill it out for the first week or two, but if you really want to get serious about building out your email list, you will need the paid version so that you can use the feature of automated emails. Um, so in that way you can actually publish these. This toggle will turn blue, and that means as soon as somebody signs up to your list, it's going to send out all of these emails at your designated day. So again, you can switch this to one, two, three days. Again, I like to keep it within one to two days from the previous emails, just so I'm maximizing on um, how frequently that person sees, sees my name and, he, and hears about the opportunity to work with me. Okay, so now that this email series is built, what do we do now? We actually have to connect it up to where that new subscriber will put in their name and email and actually connect it up to this form or to this email sequence. The great news is, is that you don't need anything other than ConvertKit to make that happen. So once this is saved, um, you'll want to go ahead and click publish. Again, like I can't do it right now because I, I'm using the free version. But once that's saved and you have it published, what you'll want to do is create, um, you know, basically a, it's a landing page or a form for somebody to opt in to, to get this freebie. So you'll want to go to this grow tab at the top left and then click on landing pages. And then honestly, at this point in time, you actually have some options. You can choose a landing page that is basically a one page, like a full page that's dedicated to promoting that particular freebie or that particular, particular opt-in or lead magnet that you're promoting. Um, and that is definitely doable. Or you can do a form. Now, this is something that you can embed on your website or you know any other you know page that you might have. So you definitely have some freedom in deciding, okay, how do you want this to look when you are promoting it? So honestly, you can choose either option. I'm going to go ahead and choose form for the purpose purpose of this training. Um, and then, then again, you get some more options here. So you, it gives you a, how do you want this to be, be displayed on your website or your blog? You can choose inline. This is great. Like if you just have a whole bunch of text or perhaps maybe within a blog post, you could be promoting it. A modal, a modal, I think that's how you pronounce it basically where it just shows up, pops up on your, your maybe the, the homepage of your website. You could do a slide in or you can do a sticky bar um, that sits at the top of your website. Uh, you can play around with it. Again, there's no like right or wrong. Each one of these is going to have a different layout and feel to it. So, you know, depending on what you choose, your screens might not look exactly like mine, but the whole point is to create the form that where you want to um, get your people to sign up for. So I just went ahead just to kind of go back. I went ahead and just showed you or clicked on the modal. And then again, you have some templates that you can work from. You can choose whatever works best within your branding. And obviously, just so you know, you can customize this too. So let's go ahead and just choose this first one. Um, so I'm going to click on choose. And then basically, if you just click on the, the things here, you can just say, hey, um, grab our free, you know, top 10 um, items to have in your newborns nursery. All right. How do I spell that? I don't think that's how you spell it. Nursery. There we go. Nursery. And then you can change out the image if you want to as well, which I highly recommend. You see, they already have a spot here for the email. If you click on the email, you can change up the colors just to see, you know, you can change up what, what color it looks like. So obviously you can fit your branding colors. If you hit this tab right here, you can say, hey, you want to save a custom field on the right-hand side. 
And then basically you can say select um, first name. I personally really like doing that. I like the first name to go first and then email. And that's just because I like to use my subscribers, first names and emails. So obviously I need to gather that information in order to use that. So, but all you really need is your first name and email. And to be perfectly honest, you don't even need the first name. As long as you have the email, you can make it work, but your emails just won't be as personalized. Um, the next is, you know, to send me the guide you could, or you could change that, you know, could say, Hey, I want the checklist. You can make it anything you want to obviously change up the color as well. Make sure it, it matches your branding colors. You could also do different border uh, borders of this or, you know, normal or bold. So basically you can make this, um, you know, a better um, feel or look better or look more like your branding. Now, in order to change the picture, all you'll want to do is click on general styles. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see background. You can go ahead and, um, well, not necessarily edit. I clicked the wrong form right there. So let me go ahead and exit. You'll want to go ahead and hit the replace there. And then you can actually upload any video, or I'm sorry, any image that you have just saved on your laptop and use that. And of course, it goes without saying that you want the image to match the thing that you're providing. So obviously if you're providing, you know, newborn photography, don't have a, you know, bride and groom on there. If you're providing a wedding photography, it makes no sense to have, let's just say, you know, a car or a fashion kind of feel image. So make sure those images match to attract the kind of clients that you want to serve and that you want to grow your email list with. So once you have that form set up, you can obviously preview it. That's what it looks like. Um, obviously yours will be more customized to your business. Um, and then what you want to do is click on save. I'm super adamant about saving my work. You don't want to lose anything. And then you'll want to go ahead and click on publish. Now, these links are super important to, to have. You don't have to save them anywhere. If you need to reference them again, um, all you have to do is just come back, click your way back to this form. But then this is basically the code that you will take to embed into your website, or you can share a, you know, just a link to this as well. So this, you know, I, I know everybody watching this probably has a different website provider. So at this point in time, I would actually encourage you to, you know, look up, okay, how to embed a convert kit pop-up form on, you know, and then whatever your website is. I'm not going to talk about how to do that in this video, but this is where you would get the JavaScript, the HTML, whatever you need to make sure this form shows up on your website. And again, like if you're using a landing page, then you just direct people to your landing page. So once that is complete, this your all you have to do is connect them up. So we have already created the onboarding series that list, uh, you know, or the series of, um, of of emails to send out to your subscribers um, automatically as soon as they signed up. And we've already created the form so they know, like, hey, when they see this, it's like, oh yeah, that like perks my interest. I I want that. So they're gonna put in their name and email. Now, the next thing that we need to do is connect the two. It's not enough just to have the form and also this the sequence. You need to make sure that those are connected. And this is the, the last part of this process. So we're almost done. You'll want to come up here to the automate right here. And then you want to go ahead and click on rules. This is I, what I have found just the simplest way to make this connection. You want to go ahead and click on new rule. And basically you're telling ConvertKit what to do when somebody joins your email list. So basically you have a trigger. So you're saying, hey, when this event happens. So in our case, when somebody subscribes to a form and then you come down here and you click on, you know, whatever form. And again, like you can rename your forms just like we remain, renamed our automated sequences. So you'll click on your form. So when somebody subscribes to that form, we want to go ahead and subscribe them to a sequence. So we're going to go ahead and pick that sequence. And then we're going to say save rule. And then bam, there it is. This is enabled. This means that whenever, whenever somebody puts in their name and email on this particular form, it's going to automatically send them this onboarding series. And then you're done. Um, well, actually, you're not quite done. At this point in time, what I would recommend is that you actually test this out. Make sure it's working before you start promoting it on your social media and on your website and the Facebook ads. So make sure it's working. So what I like to do is I like to put in a test email 
to make sure the connection is working, to make sure I don't have any typos in my emails, to make sure all the links are working in my emails. And then once I go through that testing period, that's when I start to promote it. So that is a brief overview of what it looks like to create an automated sequence inside of ConvertKit, create a landing page or a landing form, and then actually connect the two. I hope that this um, video kind of just broke this, you know, entire process down. It's not that overwhelming. I know there's a lot more that you can do with ConvertKit, but as far as building out automated email sequences or an automated onboarding series, it's very simple and very straightforward. And it's a great way to to add value to your prospects, to really just encourage them, answer the questions they have, be an inspiration, and then encourage them to book that photography session or wedding with you. So there you have it, my friend. Now you know how to set up and get an automated email sequence going inside of ConvertKit. If you do not yet have an account, I have a special ConvertKit linked for you below this video. I hope you enjoyed this four part series on email marketing for photographers. If you want to work together more thoroughly on your very own email funnel or other marketing strategies for photographers like profitable pricing, I encourage you to apply to join us inside the Book Photographer Mentorship Program. We accept a limited number of photographers every month so that we can dedicate personalized time and attention to getting them more ideal bookings and a profitable business. If you'd like to see if you're a good fit, head on over to www.thebookphotographer.com backslash apply and apply. I'll also include the link below this video.